I'm not an ARC user myself, so I appreciate feedback. I've got only feedback from one user. Um, so it works, I know that, but uh, you can try. Um, extensions can also be installed from directly from Git or um, the distro packages. Uh, look at the readme files that are um, uh, part of the extensions and or fall back to distro packages. Extensions, that's what mod, mod prop is in, in, in Linux, is, is implemented as a simple command line flag. You, you specify minus a for attach and then you get a new cap session with that ex extension loaded. Put that into a startup wrapper or lo load your plugins interactively. Um, there's also an RC file, so if you have plugins that you always want to use, uh, this is working. This is also being worked on to streamline the process. Um, for example, GNU App Make, what does it do? You hand code a plugin and you load it immediately into or uh, directly as uh, the the C code into the into GNU Cap, so you don't have to worry about compilation yourself. Um, we have packages, the two that I mentioned, and there's a random variables package uh, that implements uh, well random distributions in a in a more more or less advanced way as compared to the, to the spice random variables. We have this just in time com com compilation. We also have the the CNUCAP Quark project, which tries to to implement a, a drop in replacement for Quarksator, which is um, the simulator engine behind the cross project, or the default simulator engine. And a real-time audio processor, it's a, it's a toy project, but it works, and it's fun. You can use your stereo to, uh, or you can plug the uh, real-time process to your stereo and real-time simulate uh, audio filters if they are small enough or your computer is fast enough. And of course, we have lots of model packs uh, ready which are probably from, from Spice time where GNUCAP was intended as uh, primarily as a Spice replacement, which it still is. And yeah, some of them have been ported, some are new work, and some are available as packages. If you are a packager, feel free, ask stupid questions. I, I will always help. I tr try to get it into Debian myself. Um, other distros I haven't looked at, so I, I, I will help with that. I appreciate packages and um, I would like to see more of them. So what's the GNUCAP GDA project? There was a Google Summer of Code project um, by Savant Krishna who has initiated a basic parsing for GDA schematics in GNUCAP, which probably was an idea of Al Davis. And um, a netlist and schematic should essentially be the same thing. And um, this will go a long way and we have started it like this. And I wanted simulation from this and added uh, some more uh, conceptual, uh, well, algorithms to immediately simulate from GDA schematics without intermediate steps. This is now in the main line as a plug-in. So the main line um, now allows me to, to plug in my own sub-circuit uh, implementation, which here takes care of netlist expansion from schematics. And um, I can use all these GDA schematic, GSCAM hierarchy, build my hierarchical netlist in a GDA schematic and directly run it in GNUCAP or load it. And I've got some quirks uh, implemented, I call it default port values, which, which uh, takes care of some connecting, connecting ports that are not representable in the symbols or not represented for other reasons. And uh, yes, Spice SDB, which you might know, uh, didn't cut it for me. And um, so this happened. And yeah, the, the architecture is pretty simple. You have this hierarchical schematic, um, it uses symbols. Symbols have attributes, one is device, and uh, on, on the GNUCAP side, the device specifies what device model will be used for that. 
and then you can either simulate or translate it one to one to a very log netlist and you can interpret your results in the same namespace as your very log netlist or your schematic there's no name mangling there's no magic with uh, with global nets it's all in place and it's much easier to 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 play with circuits and with simulation and um, an example this is the example I showed you last year in the same um, we have a um, simple low-pass sub-circuit and you, you might know the GDA format it has these coordinates in and it has components like a resistor symbol and the device attribute specifies what it is and when I um, read that into GNU -Cap and dump it in Verilog I get this um, as an augmented Verilog netlist which is all top level components with um, with coordinates for example there's a net and it has its places and places are uh, attached to the to the to the wires or um, so you can is this mouse available yes you have uh, you have this x and y coordinates which uh, which are sort of a standard in very log um, these are used to to express what uh, what we need to to get the full schematic information covered in your in in this very long list. Um, yeah, what else? Um, I have started a component library that uh, supplements the the GDA symbols. The GDA symbols all have um, default device attributes, and I want them to resolve in a useful way. So I started um, to implement um, GNUCAP components. That, that just work as you would expect from, from what the symbols look like. And you can just change the device attribute and get anything behind that device that you might wish, like spice macro cells, which are often used, or even very low A models. And um, to get an easier grip on how to use that, I have uh, last week I have in included um, some some examples that you can run f directly from from the installed package uh, to get an idea of how easy uh, it is intended to work. I have uh, an, an operational amplifier. I have scrapped it off some old archive and added an analysis to that, so you, you can you can run it. You can see how it works and similar frequency divider that has been communicated on, on the IRC channel by some other guy. Um, he was asking how to do that with Spice SDB and I said Spice SDB, no you don't need that. And now it's here as, as, a, as a live example. And as a, a comparator circuit that I found and uh, added to the repository. How does it look like in practice? You load that plugin again. This is the first line here. Oh, sorry. Um, you then have the component libraries included. Um, the commands for, for fetching schematics are a bit weird. They could be streamlined. That's the first approach to that. It simply says that there should be a, a device, my device, in, in, the, in the device namespace, and it is fetched from, from the schematic. And then I, I can... Uh, switch to Verilog, do some other stuff, and even switch to Spice, run a simulation and get the results. This is a, uh, this is a transcript of a GNU -Cap session. You can type in these commands. You can as well dump it into a file and read it directly into GNU -Cap. Uh, Anyone who knows Python knows that either way works, and it's, it's the same here. And um, should be as simple as possible, and that was the intent. The next project is uh, GNUCAP ADMS. Um, this is a bit more involved. It is older, and it has been uh, used for, for other purposes. I ported this to upstream GNUCAP, which, yeah, it was kind of a big deal because all, uh, all the interfaces in GNUCAP UF, where it was uh, originally written for, were a bit... Um, a bit more broken than in the in the in the main project, and I needed some some adaptions and accommodate for hacks that didn't really work. And so this is a pure plug-in and doesn't need any changes in the main line. 
Um, ADSMS XML provides templates for ejecting simulatable component code for SPICE. So this is essentially Jacobian stamping code. I have completely rewritten that uh, to, to, um, to, a, to more resemble the model gen, which is the old um, UCAP model compiler architecture. Um, that's why um, sources, uh, I implemented controlled sources, so it's, uh, it's based on, on net lists of controlled components. And uh, the, the, the real code is written in C++ and is not generated. The, the only part that's generated is some arithmetic expressions and some topology stuff which need to be worked on. But um, we have now a net list of controlled components. And of course it's Band-Aid but works. So you can see that the transient simulation in GNU works better than the others by using these models. Don't expect that they are particularly fast, the optimization has not been implemented. Thank you. Um, so we have voltage sources and current probes, unlike the, the, the SPICE templates for the, the, the open SPICE templates. I don't know what, um, what, what, what in-house tools can do with, with ADMS. So um, what we can do is these voltage sources and probes, which were missing, we can uh, instantiate sub-circuit components into, into compiled netlists, which sort of makes use of the dynamic loader and the, uh, and the expansion algorithm that we have in GNUCAP. We have uh, some more linear operators than uh, the ADMS templates have. And it's, um, it looks like it did end, but I am optimistic that we can recycle huge parts of that to, to re-implement the ADMS XML part and reuse, for example, our sources and to get a grip on optimization on top of this architecture. And whether we write a, a known um, model gen inspired tool or we use Icarus, well, it depends on who who does it or who has experience with these compilers. Um, in any way, this architecture I think works and should be should be uh, should be continued or being worked on. And maybe that might be a way to compile and distribute IP blocks. People have secrets. I think uh, it's bad, but we need to respect that. And if it's possible to to compile these secrets into binary blobs that can be distributed for GNUCAP in some way would be beneficial for everything, uh, for, for everyone, because uh, they get the simulation and we get models, and we don't have to use size macro cells. Um, let's see what happens. And of course, we need full ADMS support. Um, yeah, we are working on it. <laughs> Maybe next year. Um, in practice, we have this schematic again. Here I, I have, yeah, this is, I, I had the, the, the unit tests in the BSIM 6 package has a 17 uh, inverter uh, ring oscillator. I put it into a schematic and then you again see this, um, see this, uh, batch file and you, you run it and of course you can uh, AHDL include, you might know this command, I called it like this to ring a bell, uh, this, uh, this model include your, your spy style or very log style RAM sets that they ship and, and run a ring oscillator, get some result that you can immediately GNU plot or visualize any way you wish. And, um, that's how easy as it has become. Um, yeah, the outlook. Um, we need some cooperation, of course. There's work in progress on Quax end. I hope at the keycard end there will be some schematic exchange someday so we can um, have this, maybe this Verilog 
um, schematic bridge or some other format that we can parse. I don't know. It might make sense to have that. And I hope for packages always. And I have a lot of crap in the UF repository that is really worthwhile and clever. Some other things aren't, but the, the point is it's possible to port all this uh, into plugins. And I will keep working on that. And that's it. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Questions? Questions? Um, boring one. Um, you mentioned binary blobs. Technically, is that going to be compatible from a licensing point of view? The question is whether binary blobs are license, uh, in, uh, in license terms uh, applicable to the project. Um, yes, they are because we don't link to the kernel. We just load the plugins. So um, what we currently have is a spice wrapper. You can come with your spice two or three binary blobs. Wrap them them into a, a GNU cap cl cl class. Link it to that. The class is licensed. Uh, you know, whatever you want to do with it, license. So you get this uh, binary blob wrapped for free, and with every freedoms, and without any license restrictions, and can do what whatever you wish with that binary blob. There's another answer from Elf to this. Question. Oh no, I. For, uh, 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 yeah, G, GPL applies to distribution, uh, not use, and so the, the 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 bit about binary blobs. Well, it's not our favorite thing, but sometimes the models come that way, and we're stuck with it. And um, the, the, these binary blobs are not binary blobs written for GNU cap. They're binary blobs that were written for something else, um, possibly even ng spice. And um, and 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 the point the point is that well, here's a here's a device model. We want to use it. Uh, I I don't I don't really know where it came from, but somehow it's here. And um, so. So by adding an extra layer, uh, it, it, it puts it in a position where we can use this binary blob that was intended for something else and um, map it to the uh, GNU cap interface. Make sense? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.